a secret solution in a crisis that no one knows. Hashtag MCO2020, part one. Dear Paprika, when people face a crisis, they will panic. In an instant, normal everyday life changes for the worse. When people face a seemingly impossible fate, they will panic and do something, anything, even everything to get back to normalcy. Take my recent adventure in Cambodia. Two days after I landed there, Malaysia enforced a Movement Control Order MCO, in response to the COVID-19 outbreak. No one really knew the extent of it at the time, but some people feared the worst. So people went out to panic buy food items and jam the highways to get back to their hometowns. Over the next few days, the government explained what we could and could not do. Little by little, we realized the MCO meant we could not do a lot of things, including travel in and out of the country. I had already bought my return ticket with AirAsia, so I wasn't concerned at all. I checked their app and saw that the flight was not cancelled. A day before I was due to leave, I performed the usual online check-in and was given my online ticket. I didn't think much of it because although Malaysians were not allowed to leave Malaysia, we were allowed to return home. Two hours later, it all changed. I received an email saying my flight was cancelled. This is quite normal for AirAsia because as a budget airline, they try to fill their flights by bumping passengers to the next flight. There were two or three flights a day and I thought I would be pushed to the following flight. That was fine by me. It just meant I would get more time to drink more Cambodian beer. However, when I checked the AirAsia app, it said the original flight was still on. Strange. So I checked and double-checked supporting websites for news of flights to Malaysia. To my horror, AirAsia had taken the decision to cancel all their flights around the world for the duration of the MCO. All AirAsia flights were, poof, suddenly gone. I checked other flights. The airlines offering direct flights to Malaysia were charging four times more than AirAsia's original price. Mars was offering a flight at 2,000 ringgit to KL. Compare that to the 230 ringgit ticket I paid AirAsia. Meanwhile, the number of COVID-19 cases in Malaysia and around the world was exploding. Countries like Indonesia and Cambodia, which reported zero or less than 10, started to report many cases, possibly due to the lack of testing and suppression of cases, as in Indonesia's case. Now, I was faced with several difficult problems. How do I get home? And if I don't get home, I will not be able to run my tuition classes, which would mean loss of income. Staying in Cambodia means spending money by digging into my savings. On the other hand, flights to Malaysia were not available and my family was pressuring me to get out of Cambodia immediately by saying things like, your children miss you and don't worry about money, that is something you can earn back. The situation looked bleak. I looked at connecting flights from Phnom Penh, Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur and PP Singapore KL. I looked at the options of taking a bus back via Thailand. I even thought of buying a bicycle to cycle home. Should I risk flying to Bangkok with Smile Airways to catch a connecting flight to KL when so many airlines have cancelled their flights? Should I risk taking a bus and sit with passengers for 13 hours and hope no one on the bus has COVID-19? What if the borders are closed? What if there are no connecting flights or buses? The pressure mounted over the next few days. Malaysia closed its airports to foreign airlines. Mars was the only airline allowed to fly in. Thailand and Malaysia closed the Bukit Kayu Hitam border. That means taking a bus back home was out of the question. My options went from a few to zero in a short time. In pressurized situations like these, people need solutions, a way out an answer, but I have a secret solution up my sleeve. 
The solution is one of the best things you can do in pressurized situations. Dear Paprika, this has been a long letter. I will continue it in my next letter to you. In the meantime, wash your hands and sneeze into your elbows. Your loving father, Daddy.